Welcome, my friends, to another episode of On Top and Hot. I'm the host, John Zadar, and this is the first weekend of March. Now, I really do like the weekends because it allows me to relax. And how do I relax? I actually do research, but I do it in a casual way. I don't have all these multitasks that I have to take care of like I do through the weekdays. So I can actually dive into stocks a little bit deeper and learn at my own pace. Well, I found one today that I want to share with you. BSGM, this is Biosig Technologies. This company is in the launch of a brand new medical device right now that is hitting a $16 billion market. And I think this is a good time to look at it. So let me show you what I got. Naturally, it goes without saying, this is a penny stock. However, it is on the major exchange. It's on the NASDAQ. Biosig Technologies, ticker BSGM. She finished on Friday at $1.15 with just a little over 12% gains. Not exactly under the radar. Now, this is a bit curious to me. We're on the otcmarkets.com website, and I know this site inside and out. And this is a major exchange stock. So I'm not used to seeing transfer agent verified or independent directors underneath a major exchange stock. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Those are good things to see, just not under a major exchange stock. But in either case, it's all good. So BSGM, what do they do? Well, they are a medical device company. They are developing a proprietary biomedical signal processing technology designed to improve the $4.6 billion electrophysiology marketplace. All right, let's get two things fixed right here from the start. One, I think this is a little outdated. In my research, currently we are at an $8 billion market not 4.6 and it is pushing towards 16 billion by 2028. The second thing and most important, I'm not saying electrophysiology over and over again. The abbreviation is EP and that's what I'm gonna use. And when we see electrophysiologist, that's an EP as well. Just letting you know in advance. The technology has been developed to address an unmet need in a large and growing market. The company's very first product is already FDA approved, the Pure EP system. It is a novel cardiac signal acquisition and display system that is engineered to assist EPs in clinical decision making during procedures to diagnose and treat patients with abnormal heart rates and rhythms. Biosig has partnered with Mindtronics on technology development and is working toward initial commercial distribution, which is what this is all about. They're launching right now. So the Pure EP is a cardiac signal monitoring device. It listens to your heart. I mean, that's it in a nutshell. It captures critical cardiac signals. That's what it really needs to do. But to do it correctly, it also has to remove unnecessary distractions. So it isn't like this device isn't in hospitals already. Of course it is. They've been monitoring heart signals for years and years. The problem is the interference from all the other electronic equipment that they're using. They can't block that out properly. This machine is doing that without any overlays. You're ending up with much more crystal clear data than they've ever had before. Now, of course, they didn't just stumble onto this technology. They've been working on it for a while. Currently, they've got over 50 patents globally. They're going to protect this. It's coming onto the market. It is a big deal, and it's going to make a lot of money. And that's the only way you protect your intellectual property is with patents. Now, this is a, a representation of the clarity of their signal. Now, it doesn't look like a big deal to us, but remember, we're talking about listening to the heart. We're trying to prevent heart incidents and anything that occurs to your heart is a major incident. So this is very important data. This is the pure EP. This is the conventional data. Look at how smooth this is. Nice straight line up, one little jag to the side coming down and another drop. Look at what we got going up. You got a lot of little nodules in there. Now, if I am a cardiologist reading this, how do I know if this isn't your heart or if this is that piece of machine in the corner? So how am I gonna be able to diagnose you or foresee something that we can avoid? I'm not gonna be able to do it. So this is very important information and it seems to be working well. They've got some percentages here of how well it's working. 75% improvement in signal quality. 
83% improved confidence from the doctors relying on the information. They trust this information a lot more. And 73% improved identification of small fractioned potentials. Haven't got a clue what that is, but they've listed it here, so it must be important, and it's a very large improvement. So they are ready to bring this onto the market. As a matter of fact, let me show you that timeline we've got here. This goes back to 2019 up till present time. This is when they kicked off their beta version of it. They got it into seven centers and they started monitoring it, finding the problems, tweaking it, fixing it, improving it. And they made their very first sale back then. In 21, 22, they expanded to 17 centers and started clinical trials. But remember, this is already FDA approved. And then they started getting peer reviews in publications. People started talking about this product. Later in 2022, they put together a national sales team. They got everything ready to launch this. And right now, 2023, they are ready to launch. And that's why we're looking at it. <laughs> Let's go take a look at that relative volume. So we're looking at the relative volume for BSGM on Friday, and she had a drop. She went from roughly a half a million shares down to almost 300,000 shares. So, I mean, she is under the radar, and I think I know why. Nobody knows about this commercial launch. The fact of the matter is they don't have a lot of news, and they have no news about the commercial launch and you can go look at their filings which we're going to do they've got quite a bit of them but there's no announcement of a commercial launch in any of the filings i mean you can see the steps they've been taking to get to where they need to be to do the launch but there's no announcement of the launch so literally she's under the radar right now about ready to take this product onto the market now, there are two companies I know of that are competitors that are in the cardiac monitoring business as well. One is Edward Life Sciences. I believe they are currently at about $100 a share. And the other one is a Biomed. And I think they're cresting $300 a share right now. This company is just getting their better mousetrap on the market. Their competitors don't have what they've got. So what is going to happen to this stock? It should get some attention and start jumping hard. We're at a dollar right now, a dollar 15. Let's take a look at our share structure for the company. I did go check this out. This is a pretty decent share structure. We got authorized shares of 200 million. You've only got 63 million outstanding. You got 21 million restricted and we have about 41, 42 million in the float. Two to one here, that isn't bad. This is really set up nice. They don't look diluted. Everything looks balanced. I do like the share count. Of course, I would like a lower float we always want a lower float but 40 42 million that is definitely acceptable financials for bsgm at the end of 2021 they had 441 thousand dollars we got three zeros up here you got to throw behind any of the numbers down here looking at their quarterly um okay rough start to the year not quite sure what was going on here hundred and thirty five thousand dollars in the third quarter of 2022 let's take a look at their balance sheet you can always get some insight here all right we're just looking at their total assets cash they've got now remember we got to put three zeros behind any of these numbers as well that's what they tell us right there <laughs> cash they've got 11.6 million cash on hand total current assets we come down here They've got 15.5 million. Total liabilities, everything. Wow, only 3 million. And they've got 15 million in assets, and uh, 11 and a half million of that is in cash. So they're looking pretty good. So they're holding on to nice cash, and they're about ready to put their better mouse trap on the market. And I don't know what this thing's going to go for, but do you know anything that's cheap in a hospital? I mean, these poor guys, they pay top dollar for everything. And how many hospitals are there? And how many of them use heart monitors? All of them. How many heart monitors per hospital? Who the heck knows? And aren't they going to want better data? Clear data. 
Absolutely. So I see this as going to be more than a contender. It's going to be the dark horse that we've got to keep our eye on. Let's take a look at our disclosures. Oh, brother, do we really have to? All right, let me see. I think I have a page here. Uh, yeah, I've already opened this up. You see how many disclosures we got here? <laughs> All right, yeah, there's a lot of disclosures here. There's a lot of recent disclosures, and really, I've gone back here to August. Now, look at all the 8Ks. Look at all the Form 4s. 8Ks are material change. Material change is important stuff. It could be uh, converting uh, debt to equity. It could be hiring or firing someone, a merger, an acquisition. Anything that actually changes the company's value. And yeah, changing management changes the company's value. That's why they go putting them in 8Ks. Speaking of that, we're not looking into the management because that's something you really need to dive into. You just don't scan over the management. Management makes or breaks a company. Their website has got some great bios on the people in this company and they are professionals. They are skilled at what they do. But you need to learn that for yourself. The one thing I can tell you, the CFO, I believe it is, is the founder of the company as well. And that is a huge bonus, folks. The founder, he's emotionally attached to the company. It's his dream. It's his baby. He wants to see his idea flourish and succeed. So I am happy to see the founder at the head of this company. In any case, we have got a ton of filings here and they're all good filings. I don't see anything bad here, but you look at all the 8Ks and I took the time to read them all. I did, there was just so many of them here. I went through each one. Now, there's a few things I wanna share with you. There's a lot of stuff here we really don't need to know to be concerned about as investors, but there is some stuff here and I don't wanna drag you through them all. So I've laid them out in a Word document and I'm gonna share them with you right now. These filings that we're gonna be taking a look at actually only go back six weeks Though we just had a very long list of filings going all the way back to August of last year, and there is a reason for that. But the filings themselves just cover the last six weeks, except for this one. This is a very interesting piece of information I thought was worthy of sharing. That Pure EP, that is their only device, and it is used for cardiac signal monitoring. Well, they found it has other purposes as well. During COVID, they said they had repurposed to develop a Meribotic broad spectrum antiviral agent that showed potential for the treatment of COVID-19. Because of this, they created a whole nother division. They call it Viral Clear. Now that was back in 2018, but they tell us here that in September 30th, 2022, the company had acquired a majority interest in ViroClear of virtually 70%. So they're not just using this product for cardiac signals. They've got other ideas for it as well. You can use the technology for a lot of things. You can make money on it in a lot of ways. So we've got 10 filings here and basically they just break down into a couple categories. We had one here January 10th. They had made a deal with Bellin Health System in Green Bay, Wisconsin. They signed an agreement. The company wanted to acquire the Pure EP. Then we have bad news and really good news. The company had received a letter from the NASDAQ that they were failing to meet compliance on two different rules, minimum bid price requirement and minimum stockholder equity. But just here recently, February 21st, the company received written notice from the NASDAQ that they have regained compliance for bid price requirement, then received a second written notice that they had regained compliance for their minimum standard equity balance. So everything is good. They are back up. They're not worried about being thrown off of the major exchanges because that's what they were looking at. So everything is great. And right now they are still over a dollar so everything looks good now these brown ones here we've got three of them these are big investments from accredited investors now accredited investors are basically nothing more than individuals who have been verified to be making two to three hundred thousand dollars a year that's all it is and we have three separate agreements here 
Each accredited investor has made a purchase. One did a purchase of 1.3 million. Another did a purchase of 1.3 million. And the third one did a purchase of a half a million. And that is just in February 3rd, February 8th, and January 23rd. So you're looking at what, two weeks there. Two weeks you've had these new investors come in. And it's really not surprising. Folks, the health sector is exploding. I don't cover enough of it, and I really should, because every day there are biotechs, biopharmists, medical device companies that are just surging, that really are the strongest part of the market as far as I can see. The medical device sector of the health sector is going to be huge. I mean, it is looking to be approximately $628 billion by 2028. You're talking over a half a trillion dollars. Juggernaut corporations are getting into this right now. Amazon, Facebook, Google. You know, for like the last decade before COVID, we were into staying fit. And that was great, but now we're into staying healthy, which is completely different. That is preventative. It's not just taking care of what you've got. It's taking care of what you've got before bad things happen to it. And that's what everybody is focused in on right now. And technology is helping us catch early symptoms, early signals to avoid the big problems. Down here in the green, what do we got on February 17th? The company announced that they had gotten another patent. I think this makes 51 or 52 patents for them. They are protecting it deeper and deeper because they keep making it better and better. The last thing I want to show you is all those filings from August. There was a ton of Form 4s there. Form 4s can represent inside buying and inside selling. It's when they move shares, acquire them or dispose of them. Well, back in September, every one of the C's made an investment. Your uh, chief operating officer, your chief executive officer, your chief financial officer, your chief commercial officer, and we had one loan director that jumped on board with all the big wigs here. All these guys invested back in August and September in this company. And they bought in at a price of 90 cents to a dollar 20. Those were the prices they got in at. And we're at what? A dollar 15 right now. So since then, it's been about six months, right? We are right back. And when I say right back, it was a voyage. This thing went deep down underneath like a submarine down to like, what was it, 25 cents? And then has risen back up. And right now we can get in for the same price they did. Now they got in before the dip. The market took a beating on everybody. Good companies, bad companies, we're all feeling the rough waves here. Well, they didn't see the dip coming either. But at the point when they bought, they knew something. You don't have all the big wigs buy at one time for no reason. So we're catching a little bit of uh, uh, big wig sentiment, if you will. Insiders are telling us something here, and it was worth this price to them then. How much closer are we to whatever is going on? Well, we know what's going on the launch. They're preparing for it too. And this was a good price then. Remember what I said about the competition? Uh, $80, $100 a share for one and uh, $250 to $300 for the other. And this company has a better mousetrap. So the company's got a lot going for it right now. They're under the radar. They're in a hot, hot market that who knows who's going to invest in once this thing takes off. And right now, now is when they're launching, folks. Let's go take a look at that chart. As usual, we're going to be doing our charting on Think or Swim. This is a free trading platform I got from TD Ameritrade. So can you. I'm not trying to sell it to you. It's free. Just sign up with TD Ameritrade. They'll give it to you. You can take it and use it anytime you like. So we are looking at BSGM, Biosig Technologies. This is a one-year, one-day chart. On our one-year chart, we got a high of $1.65. But looking back to May of 2020, we had a high of $12.43. Now I'm going to come back to that one-year chart, and I want to put some supports and resistances in here and such so that you can see what's exactly going on. I'm going to grab my support line here, and I'm going to draw a line from that high bubble 
straight across that's at a dollar 67 right there 65 then i'm going to come across these other tops right there draw one you can see we're banging our head on that one right there that is at a dollar 50. then i'm going to come down to this next one right here and across here draw one right there and you can see she is respecting that resistance she is sitting right on top of it before she decided to dip then i'm going to grab myself a resistance all of these lines we just put in are on top of the highs now i'm going to put one underneath on the lows so i'm going right up underneath this line and underneath this line and it looks like it's somewhere about right there because this one came and banged its head on it right there so most of this is sitting on it and that is supporting it underneath and look look at that that is a support you see how it came up hit our resistance, laid on top of this resistance, and fell back to this support. And it's sitting there right now. It doesn't look bad. It is above the 200. We've just had the 50-day SMA cross the 200. This is beautiful. And she is negotiating with the 20. Also, do not overlook the fact that our volume has been growing. Right down here at the bottom, going across the tippy tops of our volume bars. Look at that. Perfect. Bink 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 like it was set up this way so our volume is coming into the picture stronger and stronger now let's take a look at our trend right now let me get rid of this line that one there yeah the trend line there we go all right i want to put a trend line here from this high bubble across the tops as she's falling and that comes right down to about where we go there there so you can see she was on a downtrend all this time hit that low bubble of 25 cents, that was in mid-November, change direction. We are done with the downtrend. She started climbing slowly until she crossed her trend line and then she got some strength. Got up on top of that 200, sat up there, got her footing and has now jumped and is now dealing with our supports and resistances. Everything looks good except our technicals. I'm not gonna lie, technicals are pulling down because of all of this right here, right now. Let's come on down to our four uh, hour, six month. So this is how it's looking. You can see we had a solid breakout right on the 200. Look at our 200 right on that channel line. It all came together and that's when it says, I can get two birds with one stone. Boom, jumped over everything. Boy, is that beautiful. We had a crossover with our 50, a crossover with the channel. This was the high traffic intersection right there. No doubt about it. She jumped up here, is bouncing off of her 50-day SMA, and lost it right here, has come back down to that support, and is bouncing off of that right now, and is working away on top of the nine. Our technicals show a recovery. We have our PPO, our percentage price oscillator. This is a lot like the MACD. You read them exactly the same. You want that blue line on top of the other line. MACD has got a crossover that's happening right now. The PPO is happening. That is an imminent one right there. And if you look here, you see my blue line is kind of curving up, right? My PPO, this is my ADX, it's curving down. ADX tells you about trend continuation. Forget about if this line is going up and down. It's about, is it a straight line? Whatever direction is going, is it straight? Now we've just had a change of direction here. Well, heck yeah, she was falling. Now she's starting to go up, just starting. So we have just had a change of direction and they're spreading. That's the point here, folks. If you see the uh, PPO and the ADX spreading apart like that, guaranteed 100%, no ifs, ands, or buts about it, the price is climbing. Everything looks good. Even our RSI is getting stronger right now. Looking at our 20-day, one-hour view. So she was on top of her 50 here, riding from 94 cents. Nice, she had about a week's worth of climbing there. Broke the 50, but bounced right back up on top of it. Has been negotiating it here. And when the 50-day crossed, the 200-day down here, it became a weak spot. So everything followed that. And right now, she's gotten back on top of that 50. On top of her 9. Everything is looking like recovery. Oh, look at our bobby pin there. 
bing, right? You got a perfect blue and a, a spread on the red. Everything is looking grand. MACD had a crossover two days ago, is now crossing the signal line. There's a little bit of pullback right now, and our RSI has gotten very docile. But look, this is a nice steady growth on our nine day, crossing our 50 day. Little bit of pullback after hours here, but she is looking good. Let's look at our five day, five minute. All right, five day, five minute. She's fallen, she is stuck between these two supports right here, right? She's right in that area. She's bouncing from the top down to the bottom, scraping her hand across the bottom. And look, she's gotten across her 200 on top of her 50. She's lining up to start moving right now. Now, something that you probably missed and you didn't see very clearly, and I almost missed it too. I'm going to come back to, uh, let's see, can we do it on the four hour? Let's try it on the one day. All right, I'm going to get rid of all these lines here for you, folks. You're going to get to see them again, though, I promise. We're going to clear all those lines out of the picture. Now, what we have here is a pattern. This is called a cup and handle. You really can't see it, can you? All right, I'm going to squeeze this chart together a little bit right there. Now, can you see it? I'm going to draw a line across the top of the cup. Let me get the right line here. Cup and handle, we are looking for a drop and a recovery to the same zone point. It fell from here, rolled down, came back up, pushes up just a little back, and then falls. And there's your handle. Now let me show you what I'm talking about in a better picture. This is the exact chart we're looking at. We've just got lines drawn on here to make it easy to see now. This is where she fell from. This is where our cup and handle begins at this resistance line. It falls and cups back up to that exact point. Then it pushes just a little bit higher, falls down about one third, one fourth of the cup from the top down. And then right here is the launch point. We normally get this huge bounce that surges up here. Now, I'm not saying it's guaranteed, but you're looking at 60, 70% probability of it occurring. This is a very strong setup that we look for. And these are the supports and resistances that we had drawn into the picture. These are our targets as we watch it rise. And if she really gets a strong push, she can hit up here to $2.40. So that's the sort of thing we're looking for. So even though the chart doesn't look strong right now, that hidden cup and handle pattern in there is holding a lot of potential for gains for us. What the company really needs to do, they need to put out a press release about this commercial launch. They need to let everybody know this because they've got a hot product. Right now, they recognize 30 million cases that they are dealing with, but they believe there are probably twice as many out there, 60 million people who are having some sort of arrhythmia in their heart, but they are either getting misdiagnosed or just aren't being attended to. So there is a huge market for this. It is critical data and we need the data to be as pure as possible. So I think this company is going to go a long ways with this launch. Now I've done a lot of research on this company and I couldn't cover everything that I had looked at, but I have got six good reasons why you should consider this company. So I got six reasons here why you should be considering this company. Now I didn't cover all of this in the video, but you'll probably find it when you do your DD. Don't forget to do your own DD. So one of the top reasons is company insider interest. They're investing in the company. We had the CEO, CFO, COO, and CCO, not to mention that lonely director, all who invested in this company back in August and September, just before the commercial launch. That tells us something. Second, analyst attention. I didn't really go into this, but it's out there. You can find it. There are analysts that are unbiased that look at the company and give you their honest opinion about it. And one of them is giving a low price target right now of $1.50 on the company for where it sits. They are constantly expanding their operations. They are working with universities, clinics, organizations to help them improve their product. And they just here recently signed a master research agreement with the Cleveland Clinic to explore and expand their applications with this device. One of the big things, their Pure EP is already FDA approved 
We don't have to sit around waiting for things to finish, hoping. No, it's a done deal. They are launching it now. They are selling this product to the hospitals and clinics. Market growth. Now this is just for this device, just for heart monitorings. It is $16 billion by 2028. You're talking over a half a trillion dollars in this sector. But when you go to the whole health sector, it's like over nine, 10 trillion dollars. It is a huge, huge market. And just this portion of it, just this portion is $16 billion. And then the trade potential, there's a lot of information out there. People love to study charts, uh, investor observer, uh, bar charts, me, we all see it. The chart has a lot of potential for where it's sitting right now, for where things are set up and where it's been. There's a lot of potential. When this thing starts to grab some steam and run, it's going to run hard and we're going to see a nice gain. So, I like this company, but I'm asking you to do some more research. I think it's great to be involved with the company at the beginning. We don't have to wait for things to build up. We don't have to wait for deals to finish. They're doing it right now. We're in our seats at the NASCAR race and they're revving their engines. On your mark, get set, go. And I hope you're there for it. Remember folks, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. Good luck. Para pa pa dam para pa pa para pa da pa pa dam para pa pa ti da di da tu du du pa pa dam pa 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 da di da du pa pa